<clears throat> okay. So today we are going to talk about uh, uh, agile, agile methodology. Uh, what is a Scrum process? Um, all those details under agile methodology, and we will talk about the de uh, tool called uh, Jira. Um, and uh, a couple of other tools also. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, software testing. Um, see, under software testing, there is an agile methodology. So um, there is an agile methodology slides. That's what I'm going to open that and show it to you. What is the scrum and blah, blah, all this about us. Um, but I'm going to talk more, it's more practical uh, kind of discussion that I'm going to take it today because um, uh, every other team has a different uh, different uh, meaning of uh, agile methodology. Yeah, but from a, from, a, from a theoretical perspective, these are the details that we need to take a look at it. But we need to understand uh, what is an agile, what is a scrum and all those things. Okay, forget about all those things. What is an agile? Can anyone give me a definition of an agile? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If all the members of the team, they, uh, they work on the, uh, simultaneously they work with all the questions. Oxford Dictionary of Agile. Quick. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Agile. Agile, 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 agile meaning. Activities going on simultaneously. Able to move quickly and easily. That's what the changes to the user requirements. So that's what agile. Agile means that's what's the standard definition. Able to move quickly and easily. Why do we want to do this one? Where there was already an established methodology of uh, I mean now this we are implementing it to the software development uh, uh, process. Uh, which we call it as agile methodology. Now, why do we want to do this one? And there is already an established methodology uh, from ages, like from early 70s, which is working fine, and we got all good, uh, great softwares built up right from 70s. We have like products from IBM, we have products from uh, Microsoft. All those products have been built based on that uh, uh, well-established methodology. What is that well-established methodology? Waterfall methodology. We we built a great great software, but all of a sudden, why we are talking about this agile methodology? We want to go about this methodology. So the reason for this one is, um, especially um, in waterfall methodology, um, when we talk about the waterfall methodology, we have uh, different phases of software development life cycle, SDLC. Right? We talk about, we discussed about SDLC, software development life cycle. Now, in that software development life cycle, we have different stages uh, of your developing the software, right from the requirements gathering to the requirements uh, documentation, high level design, detailed design. Low level or, or high level, you can say high level, low level design, high level design and uh, detailed design, coding, testing, and um, user acceptance testing and implementation. So there are typically on a on a higher level basis we have eight phases. We have eight phases right from requirements gathering to the documentation, doing the actual development. Development means including the testing and the implementation part. So. Requirements, development, implementation. So there are around eight stages involved in a software development life cycle in, in, a, in a waterfall methodology. <coughs> waterfall means it's a falling of a of a water. That's what that's what they take it as a synonym. Like it has to be a top-down approach, right from the requirements to the implementation part. Now, in this top-down approach, they have established, uh, I mean, they are following a, a process which we call it as capability maturity model, CMM models that we discussed, right? CMMI level one to level four and all those things where the industry has already defined those, those procedures. Now, when waterfall methodology is following this model, they have a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a religion. They want to follow that religion uh, like, 
uh, very, I mean, uh, like they want to do it, follow it very, very uh, uh, in an orthodox manner. They don't want to deviate in that particular manner. So uh, in a waterfall methodology, every particular stage should have an exit criteria. And to go to an NX stage, there should be an entry criteria. So every stage should meet, means requirement should meet an exit criteria. And when we go into a um, high level design, we need to meet some kind of entry criteria. If we are not meeting those criteria, then we are not allowed to do any kind of activities in that particular stage. So that so that kind of it's kind of a blocker that has happened on those on those process or procedures which was which was creating or which was not a which was which which is creating a, or we can say that the product was not able to deliver to the customer within expected time frame within expected time frame nowadays when we talk about the pro products they want to deliver it very fast not deliver means implementation not um, from an implementation perspective but the customer want to involve right from the stage want to s get an idea of what the product is looking like where uh, whether I'm, my requirements are getting on the same uh, lines that i have proposed to the to the uh, software development team or the entire software uh, team, right from the project managers to the implementation. So, <coughs> so uh, in in waterfall methodology, client was able to see that particular product, whatever the requirements that they have mentioned at the end of their uh, and during the final stages of the project and during the final stages of, of the development, especially during the acceptance, user acceptance testing, until and unless that, they were not able to see the product. So if you are talking about building a project, a product for which takes like close to um, uh, 10 to 11 months, so that's a project life cycle if they have any project manager has designed it. So they were able to see the product somewhere in 8th month or ninth month. Until nine months or ten months, they are not able to understand how my product would look like. So when they get to know in, uh, in uh, during the final stages of the product development, they identified some gaps, saying that okay, no, this is not the requirement that I have provided. No, this is not the intended functionality that I that I told you, because that's the first time when they were able to look get the look and feel of that application. Until unless they are they are just getting the status reports in an Excel sheet or in a Word document saying that we are 60% done on the requirements gathering or we are done with the requirements gathering or we are 50% done in the development or we are done with the development. We are into testing stages where 60% or 10%, 15%. So this is kind of a numbers were thrown to the customer uh, about the status of the project. But they, they were not able to get the look and feel of that particular product until and unless when they, when they are in the final stages of the project. Now, when, when they identify that some of the requirements are not in line with their proposed requirements during the beginning stages of work, it again goes back. The pointer goes back to the initial stages of it. So they say that, okay, there is a small change in the requirement. Let's go back to the requirement analysis now. Okay, what is the change over there? Why we have missed it? So there is a, there is a kind of a feedback mechanism happens. They get those requirements, whatever the modified requirements. They will identify what was the root cause. Apart from identifying the root cause, they have to make sure that the new, whatever the missed requirements, the gap in the requirement was there has to be met. So they have to meet those requirements right in the design phase. Now, because of the change in the requirement, they need to understand if there is any change or if there is an impact to the existing functionality. So right from the design to the testing phase, again, there is a, a rework that has been applied. So if there was a uh, effort was done probably um, 100 hours, let's assume 100 hours. So we need to apply another 30% of 100 hours in the rework effort of developing this requirement gap and doing the t coding testing and again moving it back to the user acceptance testing. So what happens is what the initial estimate of the project was probably 11 months. Now it got shifted to probably 13 months or 12 months. Now when they shift that particular project, ultimately it's a, it's a cost. It's a cost that the client has to be built because 
for a particular development of an application or a product they need to employ they need to uh, uh, get the uh, people to be recruited now if they need another like 10 people and uh, two or four qa testers so it's a 14 people 14 people they need to pay the money for them. now if you are extending for another two months or three months means you are again it's a cost cost that the client has to pay to the to the to the uh, or uh, they pay to the companies who are building it or if there is really a problem on the software development side the team itself didn't gather the requirements client might not pay it but it's again a a cost to the company itself who is developing it ultimately it involves with the cost that's one side effect another side effect is you are delaying the implementation of the product initially it was 11 months now it is 13 months so they want to identify they they have identified this this gaps and they want to come up with an improvements with an improvements <coughs> what kind of an improvement can be done to to avoid these kind of gaps so out of this out of uh, it it is not a overnight uh, work that came into existence about the agile methodology there was a lot of work was done the people who are working on waterfall methodology they try to change a little bit of practices Uh, they try to implement in a different way ultimately it ended up in an agile methodology what is an agile methodology means they should be able to quickly react to to a, a re- action that has happened so there should be an action and a reaction should be happened quickly the reaction should not happen after 4 or 5 months after an action has event has happened so it's a action and reaction should happen quickly what is an action the client should be able to provide the feedback and the team should be able to react to that action immediately how do we do that by engaging the client right from the beginning right from the beginning stages of the project right from the beginning stages of the project now right from the beginning stages of the product means if they if you if you involve client in the high level design they can involve until until requirements gathering requirements discussions but when it comes to the high level design which talks about the database design mockups mockups are also okay fine but database design schema definitions they don't know anything about business people are clients are real business people they don't understand anything about the database what kind of a database you are doing what kind of technology you use using for your web based application they don't they don't care about all those things they need an application which is fast reliable and where they can get some revenue out of it that's what that's all they want to have it if they are putting some money or in that particular product they want to get some revenue out of it that's the whole game uh, whole point of developing their product for that one so they are all interested about the requirements until the requirements they are okay but uh, when it comes to the designs they don't know anything it's kind of a jargon it's kind of a greek and latin for them they don't understand anything they don't know anything about it so when you in when you go for a 3 weeks or a 4 weeks of design phase now if you involve the <coughs> if you involve the client there is not going to get any benefit out of the 4 weeks or 5 weeks so what they need to do is okay they have to come up with a with a different procedure where we we can constantly engage the customer and get the feedback and make the changes to the procedure or policy methodology that we are following so that's how the entire waterfall methodology is divided into multiple phases into multiple phases multiple multiple uh, multiple uh, um, i would say multiple stages or multiple phases so let's see how they have defined how they have defined it or how they have divided it understood main main reason for moving from waterfall methodology to the agile methodology so <laughs> what they are saying um so this is the history of it I'm trying to see which one is a good thing to understand. So <laughs> 
so when we talk about multiple phases or multiple um, stages um, uh, we call it as a scrum that multiple phases or each phase we call it as a we call it i mean this dividing dividing this whole thing into multiple stages is called a scrum and each stage we call it as a sprint each stage we call it as a sprint each stage we call it as a sprint so um it's a what is a scrum what is the, what 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 exactly it is it's a it's a um agile light white lightweight process it's an agile means you can you should be able to quickly react to it it's easily can be can be a progress towards the work that you want to do it so uh, there are simple like uh, what what exactly does is is it it reduces the 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 uh, time in developing any kind of deliverable that you are planning to do it like either it is a requirements development or requirements documentation or design or anything it reduces that development of it agile procedures the scrum process okay how exactly it will be done is if you take a look at it <coughs> see this is our sequential requirements design code and test right mm -hmm. requirements design code and test what they are saying is <laughs> rather than doing all of one thing at at a time means focusing on one particular phase at one time we will be doing a little of everything all the time little of everything all the time so we will not be doing like in the waterfall methodology uh, once the requirements is done the redesign has to be done then coding has to be done We, but in 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 a in a agile procedures in a agile methodologies we will not be doing like that but we will be doing little of everything at one time so we will be taking something on requirements we will be taking something on design we'll be taking something on code and we will be doing something on test how do we do that one? how do we do that one? how do we do that one <coughs> so if you take a look at this one one second I'll come back to this one. Now, from here, I'll take a real-time example of my project. How we are doing it? Okay. Can learn these ones, but uh, I'm just taking a look at it. If I miss, if I will be missing anything for another one hour when I am explaining all the details. Okay. Nothing. Okay. so let's take a look at this snapshot and we will discuss on this particular snapshot by taking an example so how so understood about what we will be doing in an agile methodologies we will be doing little of everything at one point of time at one particular point of time we will be doing little of everything you know what does that mean how is it being done so let's take a look at about our project that we have done recently last year we our application there was an application that was that was there in the production for past 8 years now we came up with we want to redesign the application the application was not at all user friendly the application was not at all user friendly so there were a lot of comments that we got from the comment uh, from the customer saying that we need to improve upon the uh, user visibility part of your application so what we decided is we need to come up with a redesign of our application now when we identified it the whole project schedule the whole project schedule got got uh, estimated to 9 months of project so it, the the estimate was uh, um, there was no change in the estimation procedure either the waterfall methodology or agile methodology is the same procedure how do you how, how much time it would it take to complete that that redesign of our project for application we have estimated that and it took around it we said that it took, it will take around 9 months and how many resources they will they, they need for this 9 months because for the 9 months it is dependent upon on the number of resources also it's a direct uh, relation if you have less number of resources you will your 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 schedule will go back will will be will be will be more so what you have to do is like for the, when you provide the schedule you need to tell how many people would it require to complete that particular project so when we say that it's 9 months we said that like 8 developers 
and four QA people we needed. So total 12 people, the actual people who will be working on the product. Apart from that, we have like project manager and product manager. Project manager and product manager. Project manager who, pro who manages the project. Product manager is the person who, who is the single point of contact between the customer and to the development team. When I say development team, let me, let me replace the development team with the engineering team. We call it as an engineering team. Engineering team would have both development and QA. Development and QA. It's not a universal definition that I'm talking about, but our company follows like that. Engineering means we are uh, both development and QA people would come under the engineering team. Okay. So they, when they said that like 12 people are required to develop this particular application for nine months. Now, when we define this project plan, we all discussed about this project plan. We have to define, we have to decide like what all risk can be applied. Like if you are missing some of the resources, if you are losing some of the resources in the middle of the project, would there be any impact? All those things. So they have to consider. They have considered everything. They said that even if there are some, I mean, the prob probably the actual estimate came to around seven months. They added some buffer of two months just to make sure to consider all the risks that have been identified. Like there might be some issues, there will be a rework effort, there might be resources we will be missing it, so uh, we have to add, get some more resources, there will be some onboarding time for the new resources. So they have added every other aspect of the project methodology and they have said that, okay, it will take nine months. It will take nine months. Now, once that effort estimation is done, we have like two procedures, whether to follow a waterfall methodology or a agile methodology. Obviously, we need to go to the agile methodology. Everyone is, is saying that we need to follow that procedure. So we went with an agile methodology. Now, when we said that agile methodology, what we did was we, the whole, the whole requirements, whatever we got, the entire requirements, we had around, uh, I would say, probably 16, 16 uh, main, under the main, we call the requirement is uh, application redesign. Under that redesign, we have another 12 bulleted points to meet for that redesign. Means it's a 12 sub requirements. Under the main requirement, we have another 12 sub requirements. So all those 12 sub requirements needs to be delivered by the end of the ninth month. Okay. Now, now, when we take that one, we what we did that one was like we divided all these requirements into into multiple phases, into multiple small chunks of work, small chunks of work. We call that each chunk as a sprint, each chunk as a sprint. So, the whole um, now here the Scrum Master, QA Manager. I'll come to what is a Scrum Master, but the main person who who follows this Agile methodology, the main person who maintains this Agile procedure for a particular team, we call it as a Scrum Master, okay? So he, he along with the product and project manager, QA managers, all the managers came into, the, uh, into one room and they decided that we need to divide this work into multiple pieces, multiple chunks of work. What is a chunk here is a sprint. Sprint means it's a, it's a, it's a, it, 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 it is one particular, uh, it's a particular time frame where you can complete a particular piece of work. It's a time frame. Sprint is, is, a, is a time frame where you can complete a, a, a piece of requirement or few requirements. You can say a work. It's a unit of work. Unit of work. Okay. Now, that's a time frame means you can you can come up with whatever the time frame that that is agreed upon within the team typically our sprint exists for two weeks we do for a two weeks for two weeks we have to concentrate on these requirements on these requirements so what we did was so the whole eight members with four qa people the when when we divided into 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 each uh, multiple chunks of work okay we have, we have, uh, um, how we did categorize those, that particular piece of work is, uh, uh, like one team would be totally focusing on the UI part, web-based, front-end part. One team would be totally focusing on the UI part. 
and another team would be focusing on the back end part another team would be focusing on the back end part front end part means if you if you remember that entire architecture there is a front end services back end right so we divided four members into one team and another four members into another team two qa people in one team two qa people in two so six people with one team and six people in with another team so again the main main team got divided into two sub teams two sub teams clear until now four people with two qa four people with two qa whole twelve requirements got got uh, got uh, recorded and we divided the team into into these two sub teams when we divided into these two sub teams what we did was okay each requirement whatever the requirement that we said like twelve requirements was there that would be again broken into into again each requirement let's assume requirement 1 requirement 1 to requirement 2 under the main requirement where we we call it as a ad uh, application re application redesign we said that there are 12 major requirements needs to be met so let's assume that we are naming them from requirement 1 to requirement 2 now the requirement 1 would have a web based application development and back end development also clear so 12 will be divided into 24 now clear i'm just taking some example clear what i each requirement would have a front end work means ui work plus the the back end work now when we divided this one that would be total 24 sub requirements again clear that 24 12 would go to one team 12 would go to the another team so from the main requirement ultimately you came up with 24 sub requirements clear now now the 12 got assigned to one team another 12 got assigned to the one team <coughs> clear now the main requirement in agile methodology the main requirement we call it as epic that's the definition the main requirement that we call it as a epic epic means the main requirement that you want to want to want to meet the customer requirement now from the main requirement from the main requirement you have divided another 12 that main epic has 12 requirements 12 requirements to be met so that epic has will be 12 requirements they mention in that epic these are the 12 okay now under the 12 we have came up with a another uh, 24. 24 right 12 for one and 12 for one so each that each 24 would be called as a user story user story each one would call as a user story so user story 1 to user story 24 user story 1 to user story 12 is assigned to one team user story 1 to user story uh, sorry user story 13 to user story 24 would be assigned to another team clear <coughs> now this team whatever we are talking about we call it as a scrum team we call it as a scrum team similarly another scrum team so we have given some names they will ask us come up with an any in innovative ideas of providing your your names to the scrum teams so they will come up with some names we have i'll take one one of my old name which i like a lot we are we called as a bay area bandits we are bandits so they called as a bay area bandits they, uh, like someone called as a um uh, rock stars i guess from uh, bangalore they called it as a rock stars so that's the name of the scrum team they they give a name to the scrum team what what is the name that you want to have it so, but the scrum team is nothing but a team consisting of developers and qa plus product owner project manager now here the whole structure if you take a look at it there was a product owner product manager okay on the top of it okay with qa manager now we have two scrum teams team a team b which has four developers two qa people with another team has four developers qa teams and how we have divided the work that's the chunks of work got assigned to six six uh, 12 requirements got 12 requirements got assigned to one team and another 12 requirements got assigned to one other team now these 12 requirements needs to be split into 
into into into phases so that they can start working on it, right? They can start working on it. Now the whole twelve requirements out of nine months they took like five months. So these twelve requirements got explained. No, that's what I'm saying. So whole twelve requirements, the whole twelve. Let's focus on team A. Okay, let's focus on team A. Now their team has twelve requirements. Now that team has to come up with a plan to deliver these twelve requirements. Now they have to; they cannot take the whole nine months because that whole nine months is the implementation part. Is is the implement after nine months the product should be available with the customer. So they cannot take the whole nine months. So they said that. I mean, this is all project manager would be doing it. So they said that okay, until five months, the team has to work on the development and. Self, you are uh, like okay. testing. Testing means not the integration testing, just the self testing within that team, including the QA people. So they said that okay, within five months they need to complete all the twelve requirements. So both the teams would start work within five months. But uh, until five months they are uh, they will be they will be working. It means whole five months they will be working, and after five months they will come back saying that I have this issue and I have that issue. No. That's not the case. What they have to do is all those twelve requirements needs to be split into chunks of work again, again chunks of work, again multiple phases of work, where they need to they will be they will be allocating these twelve twelve requirements in within these five months, within the five months. How many five months means how many weeks we have it? Approximately twenty weeks. Twenty weeks. Twenty weeks divided by twelve. Let's assume. Or let's say ten ten requirements, two weeks, two weeks, approximately two weeks, two weeks for how many requirements? One, right? Two weeks for one requirement. So that's how they will deliver. So two weeks, one requirement should be done. Another two weeks, another requirement should be done. That's how they will divide it into into uh, how many? How many? Uh, we are saying ten sprints, right? Ten sprints. Twenty weeks means ten sprints. I mean, in within ten phases, that whole twelve requirements would be completed. Within ten phases, so each phase, each phase of ten, ten means one, one. How much is one uh, phase? Is two weeks, mm -hmm. right? Two weeks. So that two weeks of work, we call it as a sprint. That two weeks of work is we call it as a sprint. So when they say that sprint one, requirement one should be completed for team A. Sprint one. Of Team B, requirement 13 should be completed. Requirement 1 and requirement 13 are same. Requirement is for the UI portion. Requirement 13 is for the backend portion. Mm -hmm. Clear? So that's how they will be done. It. So so they will be dividing like this into 10 sprints for Team A and another 10 sprints for the Team B. Clear? Which would take 20 weeks. Now each sprint would have, let's assume, each requirement. Requirement would be four people of development would be working, QA people would be working. Now when the development before before doing the actual development, they will like they will take few few days to understand the requirements. They will not come totally understand the whole requirement. When the requirements discussions are going on, it's a nine months project means whole twelve requirements when we laid out. they will not have all the 12 requirements really available for them to start the development so when they start on the sprint 1 for the requirement 1 from one team and requirement 13 for one team requirement 12 might not be available requirement 5 might not be available requirement 6 might not be available only requirement 1 and 13 are available all other requirements are still being discussed still being documented by the business analyst So it, there might be a case that they might be available. They might not be available. They know that we need to redesign the application. That's all they need to know it. But they also know that there are two well requirements needs to be met. That's the higher level of it. But what are the details of it? They don't know about it. How to do it? The development team doesn't know about it, or the designers doesn't know about it. They're still going on. Requirement one is clear. Like they have. Uh, that's the first thing that needs to be met, and that's the first thing the people needs to. needs to be start doing the development of it and the testing team needs to document the test cases of it or the test plan for that for the requirement 1 and requirement 13 so before we start the sprint procedure sprint cycles sprint cycles 
they have to make sure that the requirement one is at least is is ready for the team to start working on it so that's how one requirement would be available they will push it to the to the both the teams both the team saying that go ahead and do the development and uh, testers team go ahead and document the test maps and the other people the analyst team will be will be working with the clients to gather the requirements for all other all other requirements requirement 2 or requirement 3 or requirement 5 it all depends like for us uh, when we started it uh, like i think probably we are talking about 24 or 12 right we are we are done with five requirements in hand for us and other requirements are still discussion going on and we started to work like we have complete details of five requirements means total 10 requirements for both the teams we can start working on them so that's how it was there so we started the development so the team has started the ui portion development part of it and the uh, um the other back end team was started development of it now when we started the development in the sprint one the team was the team uh, qa team cannot do any testing because it's still de- being developed still being developed it's a small piece of work for requirement work uh, requirement and they have estimated that it would take only 10 days it would take only 10 days so let's assume that let's 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 follow a happy procedure happy path of for where the development team can complete the complete the development of the requirement one now when when the when the team completes it during this 10 10 days what qa team would be doing is they will be talking to the development teams they will be talking to the product or manager or they will be talking to the business analyst to understand the requirement what exactly is about and they will also involve in any kind of uh, design sessions if they are going on okay so they will get involved they will try to understand the details and then then they will try to document a test plan for it test cases for it so that's how qa team would be doing they will not be jumping on to the testing of it it's not available it's not there Te- technically it's not available but uh, the scrum pr- the scrum methodology says that when you are saying that requirement 1 is complete or the sprint is complete means testing should also be complete testing should also be completed for that requirement if the testing is not done you cannot mark that particular user story means sprint 1 has a user story 1 right user story 1 so you cannot mark that user story as complete saying that you are done no you cannot definition of done means the testing also needs to be completed definition of done means testing also needs to be completed for that particular user story so how do they do it so they the team discuss team team does all the requ- the design of it development of it probably by the end of eighth day or sixth seventh day the development team might complete or ninth day they might complete or on the end of tenth day only they might be able to complete the development but within the 10 days the team team knows what is the what is the requirement that is being developed the qa team knows about it they, they have done the development of they have done the documentation of the test plan and test case so they will take the testing offer in the next sprint sprint 2 where the user story 2 would be getting developed and testing team would be dis- uh, testing this user story 1 user story 1 now again how exactly user story 1 is being tested means there should be user story 2 user story 2 de- uh, documentation needs also be completed right so if you take a look at it in the in the sprint 1 there will not be that much of work for both the qa people there is two qa people so both the qa people are involved in the discussions documentation and testing and test planning the work might not be that much for the two people in the particular particular one sprint now when the second sprint comes in probably one te- one person gets allocated to the testing of the user story one and another person would be involving in the documentation and uh, test plan of and test cases of user story two it all depends it all depends how the team uh, wants to it i'm just giving you a rough example over here okay otherwise or what else can happen is when the te- when the in the in the sprint one user story one what we do is i mean like when when we talk about qa t- um, uh, qa team in a, in in any pro- in any company you have like senior people 
uh, QA people, like the, the, the intermediate uh, skill set people and the beginners. We have a mix of people in the QA team. Okay. Now, when the senior people works on a particular user story, automatic the expectation from him would be different from a from a beginner right the beginner outcome or productivity might not be equal to a senior qa engineer or a qa lead qa lead might be expected to do more compared to the to the intermediate or a beginning beginner qa qa person so what they will do is the if if there is any senior person involved in that a particular scrum team they will assign all kind of design, uh, documentation of the test plan, test cases documentation to that to that person, the senior person. Or what they will do is, okay, in the user story one, these two people when they try to when they try to uh, understand the requirements, when they try to understand uh, what's going on for the user story one, the senior person who is having in that particular team, they will work with the developer. Because the developer, when they are trying to develop it, they are developing in the development environment, right? Their environment. So they have they, the developers when they are pushing it to the QA people, they might be doing some unit testing for their particular piece of code, right? Which is a totally a, what we call it as a white box test, where we follow through the code logic, how exactly the functionality is being written. So the senior person, the the, the senior most person in that particular team. Pairs up, we call it as a paid up, paid, paid up with the developer to understand when he involves, when the developer does the unit testing of his particular piece of code. There are four developers. So for each developer would needs to do his self-testing, unit testing of that particular piece of code. So he needs, he will sit with them, he will pair up with him saying that, okay, I want to involve in your unit testing, how you are doing it. So when he is doing it, he will also try to understand what is the unit test that he has written. We call it a J unit test. So if he is writing the Java programming, it's a J unit test. So he'll be doing the J unit testing. So he will try to get those details. He, the senior most person, will set up, will set up that similar kind of development environment on his local machine. Also, everyone has their own laptop. QA machines, QA engineers will also have their la own laptops. Typically, QA engineers will not set up the development environment on their machines because they will say that it's, it's not the environment that I want to work. I want to work more on the QA environment where it is totally back-end testing, database testing, UI testing, blah, blah. But, but if there is any, any senior most person who gets involved, QA lead gets involved, the expectations would be totally different from that particular person. They say that, okay, let's pair up with the developer developer and get involved in his testing, whatever he is doing. Typically, we say that uh, unit testing should be done by the developer. That's the definition of it. But when it comes to agile methodology, there is no particular definition of that one. Like developer should only do the unit testing and testers would should do only the testing of the application. Developers can also do the testing. They can interchange the responsibilities. But it's very, very less. The, it never happens. Test, developers can do the testing of it, but QA people doing the unit testing is, is very less until unless the person has a required skill set of all those, whatever the developers is doing. So it all depends on the team composition. Okay. But it's not a mandatory requirement that the tester should know those details. It's not a mandatory requirement. If they know it, they are, they are, they are much appreciated of it automatically he will get all kinds of promotions and everything blah blah everything will be there but it's not a mandatory requirement that the tester the main qa lead or qa senior qa engineer should know the details but that's what the expectation in an agile methodology if there is a senior qa person try to pair up with the developer try to understand what kind of a unit testing he is doing it and you do that unit testing from your side also to identify the defects in the initial stages of the development of the requirement itself, the user story of it. So along with the developer, the tester is also the senior QA person. But here it's a senior QA person is doing the self-unit testing of that particular piece of code for the user story. Understood? So that's how the work would be, it would be divided between those two people in that sprint one. Clear? Sprint two, when the sprint two comes in, 
the main user story one is ready for the QA per people in the QA environment. They will push that user story in the QA environment. So the other QA person will start doing the testing of it, uh, will start jumping onto the UI testing along with the backend testing and services testing. Both. All the three he will be doing it. And the other person who is a senior QA person, he will involve in the test case documentation, test plan documentation of user story two. User story two plus the self-testing or unit testing that the developer is doing. So that's how the work will be carried upon upon for the ten sprints in under each scrum team. Clear? Now after each sprint, after each sprint sprint, after two weeks, after two weeks, every scrum team needs to do a demo. Needs to do a demo to the entire project team. When we say entire project team means it includes project manager, product manager, QA manager, the main developers and the testers. They will be doing a demo of the work that they have done it in that particular sprint. In that particular sprint. So all four developers, so after 10th day, let's assume our, our sprint starts on Monday and ends on following week Friday, 10 days. So the third week, we are when the Monday starts at Monday early morning, we have a demo. Demo, early morning, 9 a.m. We call it as a sprint demo. Sprint demo, the following week, the third Monday. Where we do, the entire scrum team would do the demo for the work that we have done in the sprint work. Clear? Sprint work. Where each developer would be opening up his code, if, it, if, it, if he has to do the de demo means, he has to open the code and try to explain what development he has done it and what is the unit test coverage that he has completed it. So every code should should meet with a unit test coverage. Unit test coverage means out of 100 percentage, the, the, thumb, uh, the thumb rule is 80 percent of his unit test should pass. Means if there are 100 unit tests in for his code, 80 cases, 80 tests should pass from his code. If that 80 percent is not meeting, then that particular piece of code is not ready to move to the QA environment. So it's it's developer's responsibility to meet that testing coverage, unit testing coverage. That's very, very important. But our team doesn't ever follow us. We, our team just pushes the code, like they throws out of the wall. Take it and run it. That's what they say. They never, they never see what is the unit test coverage. Typically, but this is what should happen. So the following Monday, each developer would do the demo. Each developer would do the demo and show like what kind of a uh, development he has done it. Each developer would show it and if the QA person comes up, he opens up the Excel sheet or quality center or both saying that this is the test plan we have written and these are the test cases that we have written for the requirement. And everyone would be there. All the 12 people would be there, including product owner, project manager, and QA manager. So when they try to listen to whatever the people are saying, if there is any any feedback that the team gives it, they will provide it to the team immediately. And if they want, out of the feedback, if there is any work needs to be done, they will immediately need to react on that particular feedback in the following sprint and complete it. Following sprint and complete it. Okay. So our 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 sprints came to ten, ten weeks, right? So the whole work would be properly divided where it would where you will be considering the rework of your previous sprint based on the feedback. So there is some percentage allocated to the rework of it and also to the development of user stories in that particular sprint. Clear? So that's how it would be carried upon until ten sprints from both the teams both the teams. Now within that 10 days, within that 10 days, within that particular sprint, every day, every day, every day, the sprint, the scrum team, whatever the scrum team which we are talking about, four people and two QA people, needs to provide the status to those six members. One scrim team has a six members, right? One team has a six members, four people, two QA people. Every day for 15 minutes they gather, they get together, 
and will update the status to each member of the team. It's like it's like a table. There will be a table. It's a table internally. They, it's a table. They get they gather around that particular table. We call it as a stand up call. Stand-up. Daily stand up call. Daily stand up call. They gather around at a particular table. Okay, and um, there will be some pen like this one. So they will start with one person. They will say that like like this one. I have done. I have, I have done. I have completed x amount of. I completed user story one test case documentation yesterday. So what they will do is I have, what I. They need to answer three questions. What I have accomplished yesterday. What I am going to do today, and what are the blockers that I have it. These are the three questions or three answers that needs to be provided it in the stand up call. Any stand up call should not go beyond 15 minutes. Should not go beyond 15 minutes. It's a quick status call. What I have done yesterday, what I am going to do today, what are my issues or blockers? These are the three questions that they need to answer every person. So I'll come to the first to that meeting and I'll go and say that I have done this one today. I'm going to plan to do this one. And I have these issues for yesterday's work. I need a resolution, or I need a discussion. On this one. That's what they will. They will not discuss. Also, they will say that that's what it is. Okay. The next person, I'll pass on this pen to the next person. So another person will also say like this. So like that, all six people will do that work. Now, out of the all the six people for that team, there will be a scrum master. So out of four people and two people, there will be one person who needs to coordinate everything. We call it as a scrum master. It can be either a developer or it can be a QA. Anyone, anyone can be there based on the experience and based on all other different skills. Okay, so one person would be would be uh, organizing all these kind of activities. Okay, like uh, stand up calls and demos and everything. So when they when they come to that, finally when all the six people provide it, let's assume that three people have said that they have issues and they need a discussion. When they say that, I when I say that I have a issue, I need a discussion with. I'll say that I have an issue. I need a breakout discussion. Breakout. We call it as a breakout. Means break from this one and a discuss. Okay. We say that I have it. I have an issue and I need a breakout. Breakout will not be discussed immediately. All the six people would be done, and at the end of all, after 15 minutes. When once the status is completed, let's assume three people have said that there are issues, and they need a breakout discussion. So they will see whether they can, they will identify if that breakout discussion would would require 30 minutes or one hour or two hour or just a 10 minutes discussion. They will say that how how severity is or how much time it would take for that breakout discussion. If it is a quick discussion, they need to just get some quickly clarified. So they will take immediately after 15 minutes. Like they will, okay, for this team this person one breakout. Whom all we required? We required developer one, developer two. For uh, person two breakout two, whom all we needed? Developer two, developer four. So that's how they identify it. So for the first breakout, the required developers and the QA person would be there. And the QA person or developer would ask the question, whatever he has, and they will get the clarification immediately. Because when in that breakouts, we need to have the product owner. He is the main person. He or she is the main person who needs to clarify these kind of issues or blockers for any team member. Because he or she is the intermediate person between the requirements and the developer development team, in the Scrum team. If there is a business analyst, they will also there. Our team do not have any business analyst, but in our case, it's a product owner who is who is, who is taking care of all these issue resolutions. So he will come to that breakout discussion and he will explain. Okay, this should happen like this. This is the final decision. This should happen like this. So that's the client side product manager. No, no, it's the company. To the team. The team on. Team on. Okay. So still team. On. So the product owner makes a decision. Okay, this is what it has to happen. So the developer will or QA person will 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 take that one and will go ahead. With that. So typically after sprint one, there will not be any any good amount of work where we can present it to the client, where we can present it to the client because it's all like a small piece of code. 
if it is def def definitely a ui something that needs to be that needs to be presented to the client they can they can inv they can invite the client to the sprint demo that is happening on the third month after the end of that but it all depends like how much work we have it whether it is good to involve the client at this moment to do a demo for them so whatever the demo that we are doing after the end of one particular sprint it might involve client or it might not involve client in our case the client was never involved okay what how it was done is we we did this demo on the monday to the to the project management product management the scrum teams now what they did was after few sprints like after four or five sprints when we have good amount of work when we have a good amount of work after three sprints i guess the project manager and the product manager schedules a call with the client and they will pick up few members from these two scrum teams the experienced people from the developers and the qa to pick up few people so then they will schedule another demo to the client another demo to the client where they have completed the three sprints of work and they will show that okay we have completed these three requirements from the main requirements and this is what it is looking like are you in line with your expectation or do you have any issues it all depends it all depends whether right from the sprint one only you can involve the clients or uh, like you can divide in in a in a in a logical uh, division of your sprints where you need to involve the clients typically when when any interactions involves with the clients it's a, it's a something it's a very very um i would say sensitive issue, sensitive kind of a discussion that needs to be handled in a proper manner you cannot involve the client and discuss all kinds of internal discussion that needs to happen between within the teams right you cannot involve client client will not be appreciating it he is the main person so what they will do is when they are providing it to the client like they will involve only couple of people like the senior most people and the and the product manager project manager and they will give the demo after the three sprints the product owner will be doing that demo to the client saying that these are the three requirements that we have developed we have tested it for each user story not the integration testing but can you take a look at it this is the demo i am going to do it let me know if you have any issue so if there are any issues are coming up out, out of those three requirements if they need some kind of changes the client would provide it immediately and that kind of work would be taken care immediately after the fourth i mean in the fourth so that's how you are getting a feedback immediately not at the end of the phase of your project but during the intermediate stages of the project so that's the benefit of this agile methodology um this is for the owner will be given the feedback to the client what is the difference product owner would be giving the demo to the client yeah uh, the demo what is the difference between client and product owner product owner is uh, uh, with a part of your uh, development team client is the main person who is outside who is giving the business to us uh, we'll take about an example uh, any business what is the business that we have with us uh, so the product we are talking of like a software product or like a walmart product uh, software okay. software product so um, um i'm just trying to take an example Yes, you got it. Yes, governor's risk. Tell me what is that? GRC. GRC. It is the governor's risk company. Don't get into like how the decoration will be done. So, the event manager is present. Talking about um, now, let's assume like we'll take an example. I'm making up an example on the fly. Facebook. Okay. Now, Facebook. This is a social platform. Oh, God. 
Okay. Um, Facebook is a social platform. Now, do we have any client for the Facebook? Are we getting any 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 business from any particular client? No, right? Facebook is a kind of a social platform that was developed like in a dorm, and then they have moved it to the to the public outside. Now, when they moved it, the client for that social platform is like users like us, users like us. Now, when they started it, when they started it, uh, there were a couple of people, couple of people, and they developed it and they pushed it to the few other peoples in the university. Now, in the university, there where other people are taking a look at it and doing some feedback, saying that can you do this one, can you do that one? That would be good. This is would be good. So the client would be the people who are providing it to the to the to that particular platform when they are doing it in the university. Now, when they are doing it, whoever is the developing that particular software or product, there might be one person who is doing the architect of this particular entire product. Okay, we should have pages like this. We should have two like this. We should do like this. He's the product owner. That's all. Now, when it comes to the to the bigger platform, like right now where we are using the Facebook, we are all the client to that particular one. So when we provide the feedback, we do not provide. We they will not do demo like us. They have another channel of getting this feedback. They say that if you find anything for us, can you send us an email? Can you drop in a feedback for us how this new feature is looking? So we send out an email or we drop in some comments through another social platform, either through messages or whatever it is. So they they receive all those feedback. So the users like us are client to them. That's a social platform I'm talking about. But for my application, which is which is totally a, a van product, van product means virtual added network, where we where we process files between trading partners and the retailers. Like we have a retailer called Macy's, and there are trading partners involved with the Macy's. Trading partners are across the geography. Now, when there is there, there is a communication happens between this uh, customer and the trading partner. Now, whenever this is happening, they want to see the visibility of this particular communication is happening. So for us, the, uh, the client is a Macy. So when we need to do a demo to the Macy. Macy is a god for us. He will be dictating us what we need to do it. And if he is not happy with any of the things, he will say that, okay, this is what you need to do it. So for us, the client is the Macy. Ours is a, is a software product that is designed for a bunch of uh, real uh, retailers that are there outside. So for that's totally a two different platforms that we are talking about. Clear? So the in our case, the product owner is within our team who is who is an SME, subject matter expert of this entire product. Subject matter who can understand the business requirements and who can convert the business requirements into the technical requirements and uh, able to guide the team in doing the proper uh, specification development. So from the technical requirements, they need to do the development based on the specification. So far as the product owner is a, is within our team. So before going to the before going to the actual client demo, we got a feedback from the product owner from the sprint demos itself immediately where within within the local within the team. And then we would when we do the demo, we made sure that all the team members, including the product owner, project manager, are on the same lines then we do a demo to the client making sure that we have we have made sure that we have met all his requirement and during that demo also they might come back saying that okay can you change this one this is not looking good or can you in, can you include some more details over? so that's the feedback that might come back no it's just a sprint demo but we are not doing we are not doing the entire product uh, acceptance testing right this is a intermediate stage of you are getting the feedback of the application where you are quickly reacting to the to the comments or feedback that was provided so in a waterfall methodology you are able to do this one at the end of your at the end of the during the final stages of the project so like that we will continue till for uh, um, we will continue till for uh, for 10 cycles, I mean until 5 months, and after 5 months, or the 6th month when we started, we, we, the, the, the focus would be more on the testing front, more on the focus on the testing month, 6th and 7th months, 6-7 months, 
more on the testing front and the developers would be more on focusing on fixing the defects. When we do the entire, all the 12 requirements are, all the 24 requirements are now available. We, the user stories were also completed with the testing. Let's assume we are taking our happy path about it. Self uh, user stories, each individual user story testing is also completed. Now when all these components are, all these 12, 24 requirements, uh, user stories are combined together, we do a kind of integration testing. So during these individual user stories testing also, we've identified some issues. There are defects that are created. There might be some backlog of defects that are there. During the integration testing of all these 24 requirements, there we might have some more defects. So we might have like lots of defects. We had around 600 odd defects, 600 odd defects for the entire phase of our project when, the, when we have completed. When we started the actual testing in the sixth month, we, we started with like there were around uh, 120 defects that needs to be fixed. And when we started the integration testing, we have opened some more defects. So there will be a mo major portion of work in fixing the defects and the QA team would be focusing on the doing the testing of it. So that will complete until like seven months. And d during the eighth month, what we will be doing is we will be doing the user acceptance test where the uh, team would be involved in the, with the actual client in the pre-production environment making sure that everything is working fine as per the requirements. So this so we, when we go into the user acceptance testing, we already have done multiple times of demos within the team, within the client. So when we enter into the user acceptance testing, the risk involved is very, very less. Whatever the risk that, that would have occurred during the user acceptance testing, more than 50% of it, we should have avoided it because it should be a smooth procedure. Technically, Theoretically, it should be a smooth procedure. We shouldn't handle or we shouldn't, we shouldn't have a critical issues in the, crit, in the user acceptance testings where you need to do a lot of rework. That shouldn't happen. That's the main goal of your Agile methodology. Where the user acceptance testing, it would be a small, minor, maximum of major defect. Even with a major defect, it shouldn't be a priority one defect. It should be a priority three defect but you shouldn't have a critical defect and a major defect with a priority one with a priority one that needs to be fixed immediately we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't go in that particular stage because you are involving all the stakeholders of the project in the intermediate stages of your project and getting the feedback you are making sure you are reacting to that feedback and getting it developed tested for each user story so when this small pieces of work are being thoroughly done that's the definition of done. Done is very, very important in Agile methodology. The definition of done means testing should also be done completely for each user story, for each user. So for, for each minute kind of details, you are making sure that everything is working fine. Then only you will get, get involved in the integration testing. Clear? You are not identifying major issues during the integration testing. Similarly, you are not identifying any major issues during the user acceptance test. So that's the goal. So user acceptance test will go. If there are any small changes that comes up, they will make those changes. And in the ninth month, they, in the eighth month, they, they will not involve the client itself. Also, they involve the trading partners who are there, who uses our application. They involve a lot of people would be there, the, the stakeholders or the recipients who will be doing the user acceptance test. And there will be a big... Uh, large portion of people who are getting involved in the user action. That would go for a typical one month. For us, it, it went for a one month. Where our CEO, CTO was also taking a look at our application. So the user acceptance testing did, didn't involve only the client. Typically, it involves the client, but for us, it was like whole organization was taking a look at it. Ours is a it's kind of a front-end application for the whole business that we are doing. We are kind of a face to our organization. If you are not looking good, then there will be a problem. So whole CEO, CTO, everyone was jumping onto the application on the eighth month, making sure that everything is working fine. And the ninth month, we do all kind of preparation activities for the deployment to get it into the production. So we'll deploy it in the second second week of ninth month, and we do a post-production support for another two weeks. Post-production means after deploying it to the production, we have to see whether the application is stable in the production also. Right? Each environment would be different 
each environment would be different uh, for that application based on the user load and everything. So that's how whole piece of work, whole requirements got split into the, into the sprints, scrum, and implementation. Thank you.